One common task we haven't talked about is a projectile that your character can fire. So I'm going to walk you through what I did here and give you some ideas of how you might make your own or adapt it. But uh, I'm going to use a, an explosive fireball. Now I'm going to upload some of the code here just to save some time. And so the part that you didn't see was me putting in some of the code I think we can probably skip over, which was you know my animation array, my skip counter, and uh, my frame. Now the speed I know we've talked about before, so we won't talk much about that, but here's my countdown, which is a new thing. Um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this fireball count down, and when it hits the expiry, it's going to explode. So the way you can think about this is how long that it's going to live for in the world. So if you tell me lives for equals 50, then 50 acts will go by before it triggers its, its explosion uh, animation. And uh, um, otherwise everything looks like it's initialized the way it had been done before. So let's talk about how this countdown is going to change the way a fireball acts. All right, so that's the first most obvious thing we have to deal with is that we actually need to decrement this countdown. And I want to keep track of what's going on, so I'm going to need an if statement. So in this case, I'll check to see if there's still time left. And for any projectile, basically the only thing it does once it's in the world is it just moves in whatever direction it's facing, right? It has no way of changing. Well, you could build a special weapon that has some different properties, but basically if you want it to look kind of like a bullet, it basically just fires once it's left in the direction it's facing. And that's the green foot method call here that does that. However, if that timer has expired, then I'm going to need to code up the explode method. So that's what we'll work on next is how do we code up an exp the uh, way this thing actually triggers its animation. Oops. Sorry about that. All right. So this time, as with before, we want the speed to be uh, a little slower than Greenfoot makes us work with. So we're going to make sure that we only process this animation if we're enabled. Um, now that the animation started, this time this is where I'm going to trigger the act counter. So this act counter um, is not actually in the act method here because nothing happens with it while the countdown is still valid. But once that thing expires, from then on, it's going to keep asking to explode in the act method. So basically, this just gives me a way of delaying the initial act counter um, and starting it the minute this method is called. So as before, that's the way we're going to work with this, was that we have the enabled animation and an act counter that's keeping track of, in this case, every third frame. So the rest of this code might look pretty familiar to you. We're just going to increment our frame. Uh, and we're going to check to see if we're beyond its length. Uh, in my case, it's the explosion. I'm not managing multiple, so I'm just using it as it is. Explosion.length. And rather than just do what we've done before, which is loop the animation, I'm going to make it actually look more like an explosion would, which is to remove itself from the world. So in this case, I actually have to ask the world to do this for me. And what am I taking out of the world? This fireball. So uh, this is a key word we haven't talked about, but it's all over the place. For example, I could say if this dot frame, I could say if this is enabled. This refers to the object that we're currently executing the code on. So the class defines all of the objects. This defines the one that's, that's actually executing this code right now. So what do I want it to do? This object should be removed. So you might not have seen that keyword, but it's pretty useful and it's necessary in a lot of times to be able to do that. Uh, one word of caution is if you ask for the world and it's not actually in a world, this could return null, meaning nothing. And that's a problem if you try to ask nothing to do something for you. You're going to crash your program there. So I'm not worried about it in this instance, but in case you see that error, get world is possible, it throws a null pointer to you. OK, so otherwise, we're not beyond the length of the frame. So we can just say here to set the image in explosion to be that newly incremented frame. So this should take care of it. We can have a look at the behavior. Um, we'll just compile it, and 
I can demonstrate it for you, but Mario is not in control of this fireball yet. So um, you can put one in the world. And in Greenfoot, when everything is initially put in, uh, it's going to be facing east or zero degrees. Uh, so let's say I go speed 5, and I'll make it live for 25 frames. So it's going to move uh, in the direction east or to the right of the screen. And here it goes, 25 is up, so it does its explosion, and now it's removed itself from the world. So it's all handled for me by that fireball. Um, I'll just show you really quickly what I mean as well. Uh, if I do the same one, but this time I'm going to set its rotation. Right now it's facing zero, so what I could just do is say, you can play with the angles here, um, but we can turn it 90 degrees. So now when it acts, it's actually going to go down. So it is possible to change it. Usually you want to change the rotation to match whoever shot that projectile. So whatever direction your character faces, that's the direction your fireball should too, or your bullet, or whatever it happens to be. So the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to tie Mario into the um, controlling this fireball so that that way Mario is the one who shoots it and not me having to add it manually. Let's go ahead and open his code. So this should be the familiar code we've been building on uh, so far and what we're going to do is add that behavior here of processing a fireball. So I'm going to create the method to handle all this work for me. We'll make it all contained down here. So public void process fireball. And in this case, I'm going to make it connected to the F key. I know I'm not very creative that way, but I can check here if greenfoot.isKey down, and I have the F key. Then this will be to trigger um, the projectile. So here we go. I need a fireball. So I'm going to build one. And one decision I'm going to make here is that it's going to go the speed Mario does plus one. So it's going to go a little bit faster than Mario regardless of his speed. Uh, and for now let's just say it lives for 25. We can do better later but we'll incrementally build this up. Uh, so in this particular instance, the only thing I want to check is that it's facing the right way. So I'm going to see if Mario's moving to the left. So if he's walking left, that means I want the fireball to also face left or west, which in Greenfoot means we need to orientate it to 180 degrees. Otherwise, I'll assume, and the rest of my images do this, so it's not the worst assumption, but I'm sure you can think of better ways to um, change direction of your, your object. Um, you can say shoot this dot set rotation to be zero. So this is now moving to the right or east. Uh, for those of you with characters that uh, can rotate many, many different ways and, and you're actually using the rotations in Greenfoot, you can also do something like this. You can say shoot this dot set rotation to be my character's rotation. So this is set the rotation to my rotation so that they match and that they're facing the same way. So if you've got like a spaceship or something else that, that actually does this, then that's probably a better avenue for you. Um, all right. Now that it's been built and it's facing, uh, uh, you know, a reasonably left or right option, we, you know, not a very versatile projectile, but it has to be added to the world. So if you want to see it, you got to add the object into your game. And remember, if you're not in the world, this could cause problems in your code. So I'm going to add shoot this, and where do I want to put it? I'm going to put it in Mario's location. So getting his X and getting his Y, we'll put it in the same position. Actually, the center of his image is where this fireball is going to appear. So you can do things like adjust it you know, here. Uh, try not to do things like magic numbers. Try to do things like getting the image size uh, and storing it as a variable uh, if you want to play with that. But for now, I can demonstrate that Mario has this ability, and we'll talk about how we could improve it. So let's pull it up. We'll compile, 
and then uh, hopefully if there's not too much lag you'll be able to see uh, some of the things that we may or may not like about this okay so if I run it and now I push the F key Oh, there we go. Okay, so Mario's awake. Um, if I push the F key, it's, now he's shooting. And if I turn, oops, turn, it's going to go this way too. And he just ex blew himself up. <laughs> so uh, it is doing what we've coded. The problem is you can probably see there he had several fireballs. So if I hold the key down, you'll see what I don't like about it. So um, we talked about the kick, how the kick could just keep doing multiple. We're going to implement some of that as well as we want to delay how much the fireball shoots just the same way that we do an animation delay. So I'm going to improve Mario's code here. And as I said, um, I'm going to actually borrow from what I've already done. So I'm going to use the same idea, but instead of a skip rate, it's going to be a fireball delay. And we're going to make it 10 frames, but of course you can change that as you think it looks better in your game. And I need something keeping track of the last time Mario fired. So fireball counter should start life at zero. And down here, this is the fireball being pressed. <clears throat> so I don't want this to happen unless the delay has, ha has gone by. So if the fireball counter um, is a multiple of its delay, meaning it's you have to wait for multiples of 10, then this will slow him down a lot more. Uh, he won't be able to just blindly shoot fireballs. He has to wait for this to happen. Um, now, if we don't keep track, meaning counting for Mario, then it's kind of useless. It won't ever change. It'll always be, in our case, true, since it starts life at zero. So if the F key's down, um, we're going to be counting the fireball. Um, and if it just so happens to be a multiple of 10, we'll allow Mario to release one of the fireballs. Um, there's a small side effect to this, and that means that the delay is always present. So you have to wait 10 frames before it'll respond to a key press, meaning if I push F, let go of F, and I try to push it again, I'm frozen for those 10 frames. Now that might make sense to you in your game if you want to you know, enforce a reload time. You know, in real life, you know, guns overheat, and that's something that you might want to take into account. But what I'd like to do here is I'd like to say you can rapid fire by holding the F key down or just by using your own um, press of the key. So if the key was not down, that means I'm not pushing for a fireball right now. So we can reset the counter to zero. And that way I'll be ready to go for the next time I push the key and there won't be that little delay side effect. It's hard to see on the screen. I demo it for you, but it's hard to see the delay. Uh, what I'd suggest is if you wanted to see what I'm talking about, delete this and then add it back after. So uh, I'll just compile it for you now and then I'll show you the difference here with the way Mario shoots his fireball. All right. Okay, so now when I hold down um, the fireball, well, we're lagging here, just, oh, there we go, okay. So let's try that again. So if I hold down the fireball, you can see the spacings actually, you know, visible because it's 10 frames apart. And again, you can change that by, by changing your delay. Um, but I can also make them closer because now I'm gonna hit the key as fast as I can. So basically, it's sort of t tying two things together that most people want to know about their projectile. Sometimes they want it like machine gun fire and they want to control the rate, but sometimes they want to be able to let the user control the rate by how fast they, they can push keys. So both are wrapped into one here in case you want to incorporate some of that to your game. Now there is one thing that kind of didn't sit right with me and I know I've been trying to tell you that to avoid this, so we're going to fix it here and that's that uh, I don't like the fact that I have this uh, 25. So we're going to use a variable. We can always make use of the variable later. It's very hard to go and unglue your code from all those magic numbers polluting uh, in different places. So we're going to do that right now with a private int. Um, let's call it shooting uh, distance. And I could ask for the distance here from Mario, but as I said, 
I'm not too uh, worried about it. I just want to be able to manage my code better in the future. So let's set it to 50 and then that'll be the default value. And that's what I'm going to institute here, not this magic number, um, but actually the variable. So from now on, that's a lot more manageable for me to update because I only have to find that one variable, um, which is up here. And I just need to do that little bit of management of whatever new behavior I want. And if it appears more in my code, it's, it's fine for me to do updates. It's a lot easier to manage. So that's uh, Mario doing some projectiles. I hope you find a good place to find that in your project.